What is happening folks? Thank you guys again for tuning in. Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new to Jonah TV, please consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell right next to it so you guys never miss an upload from me. If you guys have been liking my content, please smash that like button for me and go ahead and drop a comment down below. So, fall fishing. Let's look into that real quick, right? As of right now, the majority of us should be in the transition from summer to fall, right? And we all know fall fishing is some of the best fishing we can get. The bass are chasing, the bass are eating everything, they're fattening up for the winter, and there's a lot of PB potential out there for us, right? However, on the flip side, this can also be one of the toughest times to try to catch bass if you're not using the right lures. And what I mean by that is you want to use lures that are going to create a reaction strike from these bass. Maybe some of the lures you've been using in the summertime and in the springtime that worked really well, they're not going to be as effective in the fall as they would during those other times. So, today's video guys, I'm going to go over my top three baits that I like to use in the fall. We'll go over some honorable mentions as well and a few alternatives that you can use that will help you guys go out there and catch these big fall bass. Alright, so the first lure we're going to talk about today guys is going to be the chatterbait. This is such a versatile lure. It is a favorite amongst a lot of anglers across the country, and it's one of the best fall fishing lures that you can use. Um, now, what I do wanna talk about as well, guys, before we kinda get into the use of the lure is, I wanna talk about what's called matching the hatch. And what I mean by that is, I like to go ahead and use colors that match to the bait fish that's in my fisheries, that's in my ponds, and my lakes, and all that. Here in Kentucky, in the places that I actually go and fish, we don't have shiner, golden shiner, shad, stuff like that. We have bluegill. Now, I do use a lot of white as well, but I tend to stick with colors that represent the bait fish in my ponds. And I suggest you guys do the same. Whatever the fish you're eating in that pond, throw something that's going to look just like that. Match the hatch. So, um, with the chatterbait though, this is again kind of going against that a little, but I love throwing a white chatterbait with a white split tail fluke. That is my go-to in the fall. I love it. I don't know what it is, but bass love it. And I mean, it's again, it's such a versatile bait. You can you can cover so much water with it. You can fan cast it. You can just throw it anywhere. Um, you can even put a trailer on the back of it that's not like a fluke or a swim bait and you can also use it almost as a jig so there's so many different uses for this um, lure that it just makes it one of my favorite baits to use especially in the fall i like to use it just as a swim bait cast retrieve cast retrieve you can also with any of the lures mostly is retrieve pause retrieve pause retrieve pause so that chatterbait is just creating that disturbance in the water, getting the attention of those bass. It's coming through, you pause it, it starts to sink. Then you start retrieving again, it comes up, makes a bunch of noise, you pause it, let it sink. I mean, so many things you can do with it, and this, this is why this is one of my number one favorite fall time lures. All right, so let's move on to our second lure, guys. Another fall favorite of mine, one of my top three lures I love using, that is a square bill crankbait. This is another versatile lure that I love to use because when it dives, it kind of tends to stay around that middle of the water column, which is right where the bass will be roaming around, looking for food, looking for bait fish. And I would go no more than six feet of diving depth, but it also depends on the body of water that you're fishing. If it goes deeper, don't hesitate to get a little bit deep diving or a little more I say a little bit deeper diving. There you go. Um, but yeah, and don't be afraid to use a bigger crankbait. You know, I have just a six cents crush 100 X on there and you know, it's not a huge bait. Um, but again, don't be afraid to use a bigger bait. Again, these fish are trying to fatten up. They want to store all that weight and fat for the winter time. So if you have something big you'd like to use, I'd say go for it. Another thing too is this comes down to also preference. Um, you don't have to use this size. For whatever reason, I don't have it tied on, but one of my favorites I love to use in the fall, actually, it's still a deep diving crankbait, well, two to five foot, but it's gonna be the Crush Flat 75X by Six Cents. It is just a, you know, it's flatter. It's not round like your typical square bill, but to me, I think it just, I think it works a little better in the waters that I fish. So that's, again, another good bait. The good thing about the square bill is that if you have any sort of uh, rocks, like on a rocky point, or you have maybe some 
um, lay downs or something like that you'd have to be weary of the treble hooks but that bill just bounces off cover it creates a lot of a lot of noise underneath the water if you got rattles in it and another good thing too if you have nothing in the water no vegetation like that and let's say your pond is four feet or maybe right at five feet that square bill is going to dive right into that mud okay it's going to go it's going to go in just like this if you guys can see it's going to go down and it's going to create a little mud storm just through the water it's going to catch the eye of those fish and they're just going to strike at it so again another good lure to use guys square bill crankbait let's move on to our third lure all right and the third yet last lure but definitely not least might even be a fan favorite, might be a favorite of yours, but it's going to be the spinnerbait. That's right. Another versatile lure for fall. Probably one of the best lures to use for fall. And the good thing about the spinnerbait is that it is a moving bait. You can cast, you can fan cast, you can cover a lot of water. And if the pond you're fishing still has vegetation in it, this thing will go right through. You're not going to get hang ups. You're not going to get snagged. It's just such an all around good bait. Um, now you see here, I'm throwing, or at least on this, is a white and chartreuse spinner bait with a white um, a trailer. Now, on this one, what I normally throw sometimes as well, if you guys can see, this is just a white spinner bait there with kind of like a um, bluegill color, I guess you can say. It's got the green pumpkin on top and like the silver glittery on the bottom to represent like the bait fish that's in my ponds. but. Um, I do tend to use white or white and chartreuse spinner baits with a like gill color or um, a white trailer. For whatever reason, the ponds that I fish, they do have, uh, they're treated sometimes, so they have that blue clear color to them and they just work. But um, yeah, it's, it's a slow moving bait and what people... Um, people don't realize too is that the blades do play a purpose on the spinnerbait. Um, you have your Willow and your Colorado blade on this. I believe this is an H2O Express um, 3 8 ounce spinnerbait. And then of course they got the 6 inch Divine Swimbait on the back. But these blades guys, they play a major part in the spinnerbait, especially for fall. When you have these bass that are chasing, they're, they're hitting schools of bait fish. The blades represent a school of bait fish. Um, when you know if it's windy or if it's choppy water and you throw something like this into that and i promise you you're going to get hit they're going to see the blades moving there it's going to attract their attention and they're going to go after the biggest one because the bass again want to fatten up so you know this kind of represents just a little school of fish um and the chatterbait i may have mentioned that represents like one fish so again this is probably probably this is going to have to be my favorite bait to use. Um, you can slow roll it through the water. You can still do the retrieve pause method. Um, if you want to kind of, you know, jerk it a little bit as you're re retrieving it in, it works. I mean, the fish will eat it up. So that is it on my top three lures, guys. I, you know, these, these are great baits to use. If you haven't used any of them, go out to your local fishing tackle store or like Walmart Academy, Bass Pro, wherever or whatever's there in your area and go pick you one up. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Try them out and I guarantee you're gonna catch a really good bass this fall. You might even catch a PB. So um, now that we've talked about those, I did tell you guys I was gonna talk about a few other um, lures to use, some little honorable mentions and some alternatives to use. So let me put this up here real quick and I'll get to those baits. All right, so we have talked about my top three lures I love using in the fall, but I can't forget to mention some of the other baits that do catch bass, especially in this time of year. Now, the lures that we just talked about, those lures, um, those are kind of stuck to the middle of the water column. We can't forget top water, guys. Um, one of my favorites to use in the fall for top water is gonna be a top water popper. Um, you guys can see that. This is a six cent splashback. Now, these are good to use if you are going fishing early in the morning or late in the evening. Um, that's just when the bass love to just blow up on top water for the most part. And um, that's when I have the best luck with these. And it just if I'm up early enough to go out and, and fish between 7 and 8, this is, oh, oh God, it just got stuck. <laughs> Um, this is the perfect time to use um, that. Now again, um, if you're not a popper fan, you can always go with a walking bait, a, you know, a spook. This is the Sixth Sense uh, Dogma. 
and they're both good baits. Um, fish will explode on them. Now, what I will say too, if you're out fishing your pond, right, and you see a bunch of bait fish just pulling and you see them like jumping out the water and just, you just, you see them schooling around, I guarantee you there's bass underneath them. I guarantee you that they're being chased. Toss a topwater bait popper walking bait or even like a uh, maybe a whopper plop or something that's going to be on the top and create a little disturbance in the water cast it just past that uh, schooling bait fish or past the school of bait fish run it across that and i promise you you're going to get smashed on you're going to catch a nice fish so again top water popper is my number one but don't forget you can use a like a spook or a walking bait or even a whopper plopper now a second honorable mention here i guess that would kind of fit into that mid water column lure category um it's going to be like a rattle trap or a lipless crank okay um is that focused i can't see hopefully it is all right um this is the six cents quake 70 and I, I tend to use these more in the winter time when the fish are more lethargic where i can just kind of yo-yo this off the bottom get it right in front of their face or tap them um, where they, you know, you get that that pissed off reaction strike from them. Um, uh, this does work. You can use this uh, in the middle of the water column as well. You can still do the yo-yo, um, the, the yo-yo trick, which basically you just reel up, let it sink, pop it up, let it sink, reel, pop it up, you know, and it's it, it's very effective um or you can just straight retrieve it and fish you know they'll chase it you can catch fish on it it is a good fall lure it's just not one of my favorites it just doesn't work as well in the fall as it does for me in the winter so if uh your area that you fish uh has fish that look like this and they're chasing stuff go ahead and try throw a rattle trap and uh mm, that's twice um <clears throat> Go get yourself a rattle trap and try it out. This is another good bait. And last but not least, guys, I can't forget the bottom of the water column, okay? Another, eh, not in my top five, but if I'm struggling and it's very slow bite in the fall, I'm definitely going to go with a jig. You can't go wrong with um, a jig. I have the Six Cents hybrid jig on here with the stroker crawl. And this does sometimes get me out of a pinch, but uh, normally around the fall time, once the bite slows down, most of them are kind of just, they're not really wanting anything, but you can get that very curious fish that's just roaming around, that's just eating off the bottom, and this would be, this is a perfect, perfect bait lure to use. So not a huge favorite for the fall time. Um, I, I'll throw these all day in the spring, um, even going into summer as well. But um, fall time, it just I, I, I tend to stay away from them a little bit. But they do work, and you can definitely catch some big fish because those those most lethargic fish are going to be your bigger fish in that pond, you know, because your ones that are running around for the most part is going to be like the smaller ones, you know, pound and a half, up to two pounds, stuff like that. So your bigger ones are going to want something that's just slow and easy, and, and a jig is is perfect for that. So can't forget the jig guys so that is all of the baits guys we went through our square bill we went through our chatter bait spinner bait some top waters our lipless crank and of course our uh, our jig so i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, portion of the video i hope it was informational for you again i live in kentucky so these baits work great for me and great for the waters that are around me but don't let that deter you from not trying these baits because these are pretty much fall time baits anybody water i promise you you're gonna go out and catch big fish on these so go try it out go to your local tackle shop go pick these up and i hope you catch some big bass so without further ado guys please enjoy these next few clips of me going out and catching fish on these baits and uh i will see you guys on the next video see ya well made it to our our pond not too windy so there's a little wind. Definitely a definitely a treated pond. So
There we go, got one. Thought that was a fish. He didn't hit it hard at all. He's barely hooked too. Nice. Here we are guys. It's our fish. Yeah, he's barely hooked. And that's on the crankbait here. Jesus Christ, come on. There we go. There we are, guys. Got our crankbait fish on that uh, six cents crush. Flat 70. Let's get him back in the water. There he goes. Back home. Let's see if we can get another one. There we go. There's another one. Stay down. Oh. This is like crazy. I'm throwing this on like a on a medium medium rod here. <laughs> so there we go. He is hooked good. Oh. Just try not to get uh try not to get hooked by this guy. He's a decent sized little fish. Let me get a picture of him real quick. Sweet. All right. Well, there's our second fish on our uh, on our crankbait. There he goes. Sweet. All right. Let me throw a chatterbait here, guys. Let's see if we can uh, get a fish on this. There we go. Yeah, I didn't. He's ours. Ooh, he's ours. Look at that. Got a chatterbait fish here. Chill out, guy. Oh my god. There we go. Cool. Came right out. Chatterbait fish, guys. Oh. Put him back. There he goes. Oh. Sweet. Oh. There we go. You got it. Oh yeah, sure did. Look at that. Got a little fish on our spinner bait. He uh he's got the tail of that up in his gullet. He definitely wanted this. Here we go. There it goes. First spinnerbait fish there. Let's let him go back in the water. There he goes. Gone. Sweet. There we go.